Mr. Dragon Slayer here, and welcome back in to finish up this teaching on the truth of the millennium. Let's move swiftly into part two and go to Revelation 20, the full chapter of the great book of Revelation, chapter 20. Verse 1 And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. The angel that descends from heaven has a key to the abyss. That means he has control and possession of the entrance to the bottomless pit. Now when we think of bottomless, we should think spiritually and symbolically. Like we may have heard people who have been sinning and committing iniquities are digging a pit for themselves, but that they can put the, down the shovel any time. The essence is that they can dig so deep, almost as if it's bottomless to the unholy scourges and wicked depravities to which they can sink into. The chain is compromised of links of hardened materials that are used to fasten, restrain, or secure something or someone. We might have heard Jesus say, You do err, not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of God. Therefore, to correctly align the scriptures is quite powerful. So I'm saying to you that linking things that are powerful, immutable, and ever-living is a type of chain making. Verse 2 And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil, and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. Just like many things in the Bible, this isn't a literal thousand years, but symbolically a great length of time or completeness of time. Now a thousand years is usually designated as the millennium. The word millennium means a thousand years. But in the case of this scripture, it denotes a great length of time and distance to where the church, the many-membered body of Christ in the earth, shall have entered into the rest and finished work of Jesus Almighty. The saints of God are led of the Spirit of God and experience the great fruits of liberty in the Spirit. Behold, we're in no need of a man to teach us. For the Spirit shall teach us in the way a man, woman, or child shall go. Jesus says, My words are spirit, and they are truth. Therefore, those that are to experience the millennial reign will have been made free, for the truth has made them free. And who the Son sets free is free indeed, free from sin and the sting of the second death. Yet that's not to say they won't experience tribulations and fiery trials. Quite the contrary. They'll overcome the world, the flesh, and the devil in the will of God, even if that means them being martyred. Lastly, Jesus said to the disciples in Luke 10.20, Notwithstanding, in this rejoice not, that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice, because your names are written in heaven. Written in the book of life, not written in hell, in the book of the dead. Verse 3, And cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal upon him, that he should deceive the nations no more, till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that he must be loosed a little season. I'm sure that old dragon, Satan, tried to crawl out of the bottomless pit more than once just to be kicked or cast right back into it. That old dragon, a confederacy of fallen angels, has a boundary set upon them where they can't go beyond it because a spiritual seal has been placed and forbids it. Some jobs require certain tools to complete the job and without them, you can't even do the job until you get them, because it's impossible. Thinking in this same concept of ideology, until the technology is available, Satan, that old dragon, won't be able to deceive the nations fully to see scripture come to pass. Loosed from the abyss entirely for a little season means complete world domination and a, gr and a great tribulation for the church worldwide. For this to take place, there must be worldwide communications set up so that all of Satan can be on the same page. Think of the corrupted media 
and corrupt governments. Just try to find one that isn't. Verse 4, And I saw thrones, and they that sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. Thrones symbolically are powers to preside in judgment in the affairs of mankind. Just like Moses needed judges to preside over the common affairs of Israel because it was wearing them out, so too thrones have been erected in the heavenlies to help Jesus with the smaller matters, while the great matters are at his behest alone. With billions of people, there's a lot of judges in heaven to help with the workload. Just think how many saints that went on to glory, that rejected the beast system. Just think how many there must be. Don't you know they'll be as angels? And surely many of them reign with Christ, symbolically, for the millennium, as guardian angels for the saints in this dimension. If you don't want to take the mark of the beast, don't let Satan sit on the throne of your heart, which is symbolically your mind. The place where you judge your courses of action. Verse 5 But the rest of the dead lived not again until a thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. This is the resurrection of the damned, those shut out of heaven. Their lawlessness and wickedness have separated them from the just and godly. Where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. In other words, they'll be in hell, and hell is separation from God. These are symbolically and figuratively humans that died in disgrace and went into the abyss. These humans resurrect out of the bottomless pit as a superhuman locust army under the beast's control and leadership in the earth. Verse 6, Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. These are those that have died and resurrected in right standing with God, and reign symbolically for the millennium with Christ, until 777, when all that are alive on earth and in the flesh are transformed from the flesh to the spiritual man or woman at the same time. For those accounted as worthy of God's kingdom and those that have already been judged worthy, they will not experience the second death, that is to say, the lake of fire. Verse 7 And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. There's a saying, there's strength in numbers, and there's hundreds of millions of these locust army superhuman warriors of the beast, along with the multitude of the dragon confederacy comprised of fallen angels, the ancient classes of serpents, known as dragons, and mega colossal snakes. When these two great confederacies, the beast confederacy, and Dragon Confederacy combined in their plans, plots, policies, and purposes through communications and technologies, they'll be virtually unstoppable in power and prestige. God said the end times will be like Noah's day before he entered the ark. The monopolies of the men of renown had corrupted and defiled the earth in Noah's region so greatly that God required its destruction along with its inhabitants, except for those on Noah's Ark. The time draws near for that same kind of judgment, though it will not be through water, but by fire. And it won't just take place in Noah's region, but worldwide. The very circumstances that lead up to such a judgment of destruction 
are the proofs that Satan has been loosed for that short season. Verse 8, And shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. Remember, Satan is just the name of evil entities. It doesn't mean that there won't be factions among Satan. They might hate and war against each other, but their master is the devil. Think of it like street gangs. They might hate one another, but they are together in their minds through whom they serve, and that one is the devil. Now the four corners is representative of the earth. The east, the west, the north, and the south. I like to think of Gog and Magog as the rulers of the two confederacies, the Beast Confederacy and the Dragon Confederacy, through which they'll gather from all over the globe their servants to fight God's servants. It goes on to say that there's so many of them, they'd symbolically be as hard to count as the sand on the, ble on the beach. Probably because there's billions of them. That's right, I said billions. Verse 9, And they went up on the breath of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about and the beloved city. And fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. Symbolically, this is the final battle. Good versus evil. The saints are surrounded, but God surrounds those that have surrounded the saints because he is above all. Once the time has reached its pinnacle, I dare say a nuclear war takes place by which all flesh is changed into its spiritual form. This for some flesh is the second death, for they shall die, be put to death, then damned, which will lead to the second death. The death of the spirit through the imprisonment within the lake of fire. For the saints and their flesh, this will be the first death, and they'll have resurrected to eternal life. Verse 10, And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night, forever and ever. This is the foretelling of the end judgment of the final war, where the beast confederacy and dragon confederacy are cast into the lake of fire. There is no end to their torments, and no, it absolutely doesn't mean that they'll be destroyed as if they never were. No, they're going to be burned from ashes within, so that nothing is left of their lives except the silhouettes of who they were. These silhouettes will be burned, but not consumed completely in a white-hot flame for an eternity. Verse 11, And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose faith the earth and the heaven fled away. And there was found no place for them. Being as there's so many humans made from flesh that got turned into spirit men and women, they'll need to be separated. And this takes place at the great white throne judgment. Already those approved in verse 4 of chapter 20 of the book of Revelation have already been before their great white throne judgment. These are the last people who were still in their flesh that died and have resurrected to life or death. Verse 12, And I saw dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books, according to their works. God rewards everyone according to their works some to everlasting life, and others to damnation and everlasting disgrace. Verse 13, And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works. 
The C symbolically is the great multitude of peoples, the different races, while hell in this case are those who live separate from God. You don't have to be out of your flesh body to be a citizen of hell if you didn't know. Verse 14, and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. Another name for death is Satan. So it's the satanic and those who dwelt apart from God that were cast into the lake of fire. Verse 15, and whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Just repeating the judgment that any and all who didn't serve God at the time of their death will be cast into the same place as their master they followed is at. And that's the lake of fire for an eternity. All hope is extinguished and it's their final death, so to speak. That's it for this teaching and examination of Revelation 20. I hope this has ironed out some of your beliefs about the millennium and got rid of the erring teachings you've been subjected to. The millennium isn't what most have been taught it was. Rather, it's the way more easily to understand. Even a child could navigate through it the way I've taught it. Unfortunately, others have confused and multiplied the errors due to their own persuasions and traditions. If there's one thing I know about traditions, it's to stick with God's tradition. Now please say this prayer with me. Father God, thank you for all that you've done and are going to do, creating me a desire never to faint, nor to give up in seeking and doing your will. Show me false teachers and their teachings swiftly so that I never fall away. In Jesus' mighty name I ask. Amen and amen.